In today's video, I'm going to be covering my top five favorite places, the hidden gems of Southern California that the locals do not want you to find out about. So are you ready? Let's go. Welcome back everybody. My name is Linda Jones. I'm the CEO of Crafted Travel Company and the author of Travel Agent Secrets. Today is the second of a two-part series where I'm covering my top 10 favorite picks of Southern California. Now, these are not your typical LA and San Diego. These are the little hidden gems that the locals like to go to when it gets way too crowded in LA and San Diego and we want to escape. So today, uh, in the first video, I covered numbers six through 10. Today, we're covering the top five and I can't wait to get started and let you know all of our little secret favorites. So are you ready? Let's dive in. My number five pick is Julian, California. Now this is a, a town that is very much still in the gold rush era. Everything that they have around it, there's still some working gold mines there. And that's kind of the feel of the entire town. It is a small town, uh, so you easily walk back uh, up and down the street with local shops and restaurants. They are known for their Julian apple pies, which are incredible if you have an opportunity to go. But there's a lot of really cool things to do. You can go to uh, an actual mine, go touring through the actual tunnels of a, of a, of a mine. You can go panning for gold as well. Um, there's also a really neat California uh, wolf center where you can go and see the, the wolves in their natural habitat. It's very, uh, very, very cool. Now this place is great for cute local shops and restaurants. Now the weather can get snowy in the winter, uh, but it gets really beautiful beautiful in the summer. The high seasons are going to be in the fall around apple picking season because there are some orchards there. They used to have a uh, apple pick where you could go and pick apples, but I don't believe they have that anymore, but it is famous for their apples. So the fall is a great time to go. It's also a very popular time to go, but you can also go in the spring and the summer and have really, really excellent stay and lots of things to do because it's kind of, it's nestled up into the Kayakoma mountains. So there's hiking and biking and camping and stargazing and you know four wheel driving. There's all sorts of outdoors things to do. There's also the Kayakuma Lake. So you can go boating, uh, you can go uh, fishing. You can also, a lot of people go and go local wine tasting or they go horseback riding. It's a great little town for a weekend getaway or possibly even a few extra days. It is a small town feel. So it just depends on how active you would like to be and how many things you wanna see. Uh, the place that I recommend that you stay if you're not camping is the Julian Gold Rush Hotel. This is a really cool Victorian style bed and breakfast that is right in the heart of Julian, kind of it's on Main Street. So if you're sitting on the front porch, you can see all the people going up and down Main Street. It's easily obviously walkable to all of the places there uh, and has really amazing food and nice rooms. It's just a really uh, unique bed and breakfast in the heart of town and I highly recommend it. Number four for me is Solana Beach. Now this is in, kind of in the main San Diego area, but it's about a half an hour north of actual downtown San Diego. It is a seaside community, so lots of beachfront area, but it's kind of still a hidden secret in San Diego. All of the tourists haven't really caught on to it, so it's not as crowded and busy as a lot of other San Diego beaches, uh, but it's a really kind of uh, a beach community with a really eclectic shops and restaurants. It's the place you would go if you want to find those one of a kind, one of a kind finds that are very, very unique and special. Now this is a great place to go year round because the San Diego and Southern California areas are pretty temperate. Yeah, it can get a little chilly in the winter, but it actually has a lot of days that are really great and uh, and then beautiful in the summer. One of the best times to go is in the spring. That's when a lot of people go because you can also catch the Del, Del Mar Fair, which is just up the road and is one of the best county fairs that I've ever been to. All of your typical county fair style 
rides and food, but in a really beautiful setting. Also highly recommended is to go anytime between July 10th and September 7th for the Del Mar races. Again, just up the street from Solana Beach, and it is so much fun. You go in and if you want, you wear those big hats like they do at all of the horse racing tracks. They have food, they have drinks, and you can have all of the kind of the live action of betting on the horses. It is so much fun. I highly recommend it if you find yourself in the area. The other thing you can do is go to the Fletcher Cove Beach where you can do snorkeling and surfing and swimming. It's a secluded little inlet that a lot of families go to. You can also go to Tide Beach Park with a ton of really cool tide pools that you can see. If you're more of a nightlife and music, go to the world famous Belly Up where they have had really big names in music since 1974. And then just a little further south past Del Mar is the La Jolla Caves, which is these really cool tunnel sea caves and tunnels that the bootleggers used to use. And if you go to the La Jolla Cave store, you can actually get a private tour down into the cave. Uh, you can go paddle boarding and snorkeling and kayaking. It is just a, it's just really neat to be able to see and to experience from the inside. Now, there are only three hotels in Solana Beach and none are really, worth writing home about. So if you are going to be staying in Solana Beach, I recommend an Airbnb. There's some really great Airbnb vacation rentals available, whether you're staying right in Solana Beach or just up the road in Del Mar or in Cardiff. Uh, you can go all the way as up, all the way up to La Jolla, but La Jolla is going to be uh, more busy. That one is more affluent. Think a beach front Beverly Hills kind of a feel to it. It's it's definitely a different vibe. Solana Beach is a lot more uh, unique, special beachfront town. And so if you can stay there, Del Mar or Cardiff, it's all kind of a really cool uh, atmosphere and, uh, and a Airbnb or vacation rental would be perfect in this area. Number three is Catalina Island. Now this is a fame, this is a favorite amongst Southern Californians for either a day trip or a weekend. But I actually, if you have time, recommend staying a little bit longer if you can. It is about an hour, a little over an hour ferry ride from Orange County. And there's two harbors to go into. The main one is Avalon. And that's where all of the shopping and restaurants and a lot of the tours and things depart from is Avalon, so that's what I recommend. Now you can go there year round. The highest times are spring and summer. That's the most popular time because it is an island and a beach, but you can also go in the fall and winter and though it might be a little chillier, there's still a ton to do in those seasons as well. Now, this island, as opposed to Coronado, which we spoke about before, has so much more to do. Yes, you have a very walkable, small town feel where you have lots of shops, unique shops and restaurants that you can walk up and down to. You can get bikes, you can uh, drive in golf carts uh, because only the locals have cars and it's a limited number of cars. So you either need to walk everywhere or get a golf cart to tour around. Uh, so it's great for that, but there are so many other things to do because of, of the the islands, you can go snorkeling, scuba diving, kayaking, paddle boarding. You can do glass bottom boat boats. You there's a zip line, a really cool zip line. There's an aerial course, which is kind of those suspended bridges that you have to weave in and out of that are really fun. Uh, you can do a four, uh, one of the tours that everybody raves about and, and I love is the four wheel tour to see the bison, it is so much fun. It doesn't sound like much, but it is so much fun and I highly recommend it. There's also a falconry experience where you can actually have the falcon land on you and have that entire uh, experience. It is so cool. It's also a great place for those local cool restaurants and a lot of nightlife. A lot of people go bar hopping in the main area. When staying in Catalina, you have a lot of options. There's a ton of vacation rentals. So that is always kind of the top place that you can go. But if you you want something with a little bit more more amenities to it a little bit more to offer i highly recommend the pavilion hotel now it is right smack dab in the middle of the downtown area overlooking the marina and the bay area of avalon it has free uh, in-room breakfast every morning. They have nightly hors d'oeuvres with wine and cheese pairings. They have bike rentals that you can get and you're right in the middle of town so you can walk to anything that you wanna do. 
One of the cool things they do though, is they also get your luggage for you when you get off the ferry and take it to the resort for you. Because even though it's not that big of a deal, it's kind of a pain to lug your luggage down the wooden boardwalk all the way down to the hotel. Number two is Temecula. Now Temecula is the Napa of Southern California. So think uh, wineries, tons of wineries, wine tasting. Now it's not a small town, it is a regular city, but they have a uh, whole stretch that just is filled of open wide land with as filled with wineries. It is actually really beautiful, even though it's kind of in the desert and it can get hotter, it can get well over a hundred degrees in the summer. They have this, uh, wind that comes through that cools the grapes and makes it an excellent winery region. Beautiful rolling uh, vineyards. It is actually very extraordinary and it is our favorite place. A lot of Southern Californians love to go there for the weekend or for longer to go wine tasting, experience new places, have some incredible food, really cool resorts and hotels in the wineries. It is just one of my favorite places to go, a place that I, my husband and I go often for our anniversary. It is just a really, really neat place to stay, but it's not just the wineries. There's an old town with really unique shops and restaurants, and there's also lots of other things to do, including hot air balloons, horseback riding, four wheel drive tours, uh, all different kinds of things that you can do beyond just going wine tasting. But my favorite thing to do is wine tasting and staying in a resort and visiting the spa. So my favorite place to stay when I go to Temecula is the Ponte Vineyard Inn. This is a gorgeous Spanish adobe style resort with incredible rooms, a beautiful pool for laying out with a, a cocktail in your hand. They also have the winery, although it's not necessarily my favorite winery, but it is my favorite hotel resort area. They have two amazing restaurants. They have a cellar bar, which is really cool. And you walk down into it. Now, Temecula in general, you either need to Uber to the wineries because they're quite spread out, or you stay in a place like the Ponte Vineyard where you can walk to at least three wineries and be able to get back and forth pretty easily. But if you go to Temecula, along the main stretch of road, which the Ponce Vineyard Inn is on, there are a lot of very busy wineries, a lot of very popular wineries. This is where the tour buses are gonna go. And you can absolutely do a wine tour and I highly recommend them, honestly. But if you wanna find those little out of the way spots that the tour buses don't stop at, because sometimes those tour buses, you walk in and there's just mobs of people at trying to get their drinks, trying to get their, their tastings, and it can be a little off-putting. So if you want something that's a little bit less crowded and a little more special and unique, I recommend going away from that main road to some of the other little uh, wineries that are actually a road or two over. A great way to get there is to Uber. Uh, and the main winery that I rec highly recommend, like highly, is Lumiere. It is uh, one of the oldest vineyards in Temecula and it has incredible wine, just incredible wine and a cute little wine tasting where they pair it with some uh, bread and, and different things and you can order little cheese plates. It's, it's my favorite winery in Temecula and I highly recommend it. Okay, number one recommendation is Laguna Beach. Now, this is a beach town in Orange County, California, and it is kind of cut off. There's only really two main uh, roads in, and it's protected from the mountains. So it's, it's a small town, beach town kind of a feel. It's an artist community and very LGBTQ uh, friendly area. It is, I feel, still kind of a hidden secret in Orange County. A lot of people come and they go to some of the other beaches that are more popular like Huntington Beach and Newport Beach, but Laguna still has that hometown feel and absolutely beautiful beaches, beautiful paradise striking 
beach. You can go snorkeling or scuba diving in Shaw's Cove. You can go surfing at Thalia Street Beach. You can also, Victoria Beach is the kind that you see on postcards. It is a gorgeous paradise to go to and lay out and enjoy the sun. I love to go there by myself. It is excellent for solo travel because everything is walkable in town. And if you stay a little bit outside of town, they actually have a trolley that goes up and down PCH so that you can get back and forth from town fairly easily. Lots of great little shops and restaurants, and it is just a really cool beach town, worth a weekend for sure, but my ideal is to say at least a week because just to relax and take it all in, it is amazing. Um, also, because it's kind of protected by the mountains. There's some really amazing hiking available there in addition to all of the water sports that you can do. Now, if you have the budget for a more luxury stay there and you want to do something more along wellness, a really neat thing you could do is go to the Pearl Laguna. Now this is a full wellness retreat. It can get quite expensive, but if it's in your budget it is well worth it. It is the kind that has your, all of your meals are local farm fresh hand cooked each day for you, all of your meals. And they have fitness classes and yoga and beautiful sweets and it's just, oh, it is relaxing. And if you're looking for that retreat to kind of you know, re reinvigorate yourself, rejuvenate yourself and get started on a healthy lifestyle, this is a great place to go. Another world famous luxury retreat in Laguna Beach is the Montage. Now this is more of your typical luxury uh, resort with a spa and a private beach and a pool. They have villa rentals available and regular suites available. You can go paddle boarding, you can go whale watching, you can rent bikes. You can easily take the trolley into town because it is a little bit south of where the main part of town is. It has world famous restaurants and bars. It is just luxury and relaxing and just one of those world famous resorts that you can stay. But that is not the only place that you can stay for sure. There are more affordable places to stay closer into town that you can easily walk to town and that are really incredible. Another really great thing to do is Airbnbs in Laguna Beach and really have your own little space in your own home, some even beachfront as well. Now, one of the best things to do in Laguna Beach is to eat. And my favorite places to go is Nick's. Now this one is a local favorite and it's very casual, nothing frou-frou or fancy or Michelin star, but good food in a casual atmosphere. My other favorite and I go to every year for my birthday is Alessa. It is an Italian restaurant where they make handmade pasta. It is incredible, incredible. Uh, another thing that we love to do is get bonsai bowls. Those are those acai uh, smoothie kind of bowls with granola and different kinds of toppings. So good. And then also Cafe Zinc for breakfast or for lunch. It also has a really great market, just excellent food that all of the locals go to. And it's kind of the hidden secret of Laguna Beach. So Laguna Beach has to be one of my favorite places to visit in Southern California. So that's it. That is our top destination picks for Southern California, minus your big city areas like Los Angeles and San Diego and Anaheim, of course, because there's so much information available on those three cities that you can find that. I wanted to bring you kind of the little local uh, favorite places that isn't widely publicized and that you don't hear about that make your vacation, your solo travel to Southern California absolutely exquisite. So thank you for watching today. In future videos, I'm gonna drill down more deeply into these areas and give you even more tips and tricks of things that you can do in these places, more ideas. Uh, but also on this series, we're going to be moving into Northern California and Central California, where I'll be talking about the top destination picks in those two areas before moving on to the rest of the country. We'll be bringing you the top picks for the South, the Rocky Mountains, the Northeast, the Northwest, all over the place. And I can't wait to share it with you and give you that travel inspiration for solo, particularly solo female travelers. If you found this helpful, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell if you'd like to be notified when new videos come out. We typically bring you three new videos every week, all things travel uh, destinations, travel planning, tips and tricks for how to make your vacations absolutely spectacular. So thank you so much for stopping by. I want to wish you a fantastic day and happy travels. Bye-bye.